All right, I'm back, and the reason for my absence is a few things. Number one, I've been having very bad family problems. My mom is having health problems. I've been taking care of her. She's fine now. She's okay. And just normal family problems that have been sucking every second of my life out of me. But either way, I'm back now, and hopefully back for good now. But we have to talk about Joe Biden, Elizabeth Warren, and Bernie Sanders, because as of a few days ago, Bernie Sanders had a heart attack and Joe Biden is slipping in the polls. So that leaves Elizabeth Warren most likely to gain the Democratic frontrunner position. There is no chance in hell that Bernie Sanders is going to make it through to the general election, especially at his age. What is he, like 76 years old? He's had a heart attack. That's, that, that is not a good sign for his health coming in the future. Joe Biden is slipping more and more mentally. It is clear now that he has some kind of dementia and it is not going well for him and, and Joe, uh, Joe Biden is not going to handle himself in the general election, especially since the whole Ukrainian issue was dragging him down in the polls, even though the Democrats thought it was going to do that to Trump, but it's actually doing it to their front runner because his son is all involved in it. So that leaves Joe Biden out because of this whole Ukrainian scandal and then of course his failing mental health. Bernie Sanders recently had a heart attack and is not going to look like he's going to be running a 2020 campaign, especially against Trump. So that leaves Elizabeth Warren to be the front runner for the Democrats. Now, Elizabeth Warren's problem is that she sucks at debating. Elizabeth Warren does not do good under pressure. Elizabeth Warren has lied her entire life about her ethnicity, has been a corporate sellout since she's gained into politics, even though she's trying to maneuver herself to be a far leftist, the internet and the archives will prove her wrong that she's just a corporate neoliberal candidate and that the far left, even though many of them will support her because number one, she's a woman and number two, she claims to be a far leftist. But one of her disadvantages is that she's a white woman. She is not a Native American like she claimed to be all of her, all, all of her life. She is a white woman from New England very waspish individual and her number one flaw going into the general is of course her line and she can't go against trump trump is going to put her feet to the fire and she's going to look like a deer in headlights she can't handle it and now you have a bunch of democrats and a bunch of democratic voters longing for the days of hillary clinton because this is just how bad elizabeth warren is going to be and how bad the democratic field actually looks nobody else in the democratic field is viable nobody else can go against trump the only one that i thought was good enough was tulsi gabbard and the democrat uh, or the dn C has shut her out. Oh, she gets to go to the third debate, but at the same time, she's not going against, uh, I, I guarantee you that the, the DNC is not going to put Tulsi Gabbard up against Elizabeth Warren because they don't want Tulsi Gabbard doing to Elizabeth Warren what she did to Kamala Harris, which was utterly slaughter her in the debates. Kamala Harris was riding high, uh, Tulsi Gabbard comes in, bashes her ba back down, and then her support dwindles. And the DNC is scared that Tulsi Gabbard is going to do the same thing to Elizabeth Warren. Now, since uh, uh, Bernie Sanders is out of the race, or going to be, I, I wouldn't be surprised if he came out in the next coming weeks and say, yeah, he, you know, he's, he's ending his campaign. But the DNC might not let him because they want him to rile up the, the youth, the far left youth. And then w when it is time to bend knee and support somebody, just like they did in 2016, Hillary Clinton Clinton was a shoe in by the DNC and Bernie Sanders was only put there to rile up the youth and then drop out and endorse Hillary Clinton and then all his support or the majority of his supporters would flock to Hillary Clinton. The only way I see Bernie Sanders staying in the race is the DNC making him to do the same thing he did in 2016, which is rile up the youth and drop out when the nominee is confirmed or not confirmed, but is most likely, which is going to be Elizabeth Warren, to drop out and then endorse her and then all of his supporters will go to her, go to her or at least the majority of them.
but to the far left, you know, the socialists, the Bernie bros, you know, I'm sorry. I'm sorry your candidate had been screwed in 2016, you know, as having health problems. And for the most part, Bernie Sanders has always been healthy. But you know, he's 77, he's 76 years old, something like that. He has a heart attack that does not do well or say good things about the future in terms of Bernie Sanders. So basically he has to take it slow. He can't do a, you know, campaign, a general election campaign with his kind of heart problems. And I'm pretty sure that's exactly what his doctors told him. Now, of course, Joe Biden is still in the lead and still considered the front runner, but he is losing support because of the Ukrainian scandal and is going mentally. He, he has Alzheimer's or dementia. He's not going to be around much longer, or at least mentally. He's not going to be coherent. And you bet your ass Trump is going to take full advantage of that. So that leaves Elizabeth Warren to be the front runner. Now, Elizabeth Warren has her own problems. Number one, and the best being is that she cannot debate Trump. She cannot be going on a stage with President Trump and expect to go head on heels with him because he's antagonistic. He's going to antagonize her. He's going to mess with her. He's not going to debate her. He's going to make fun of her. And she's going to get mad. She's going to get hot under the collar and she's going to snap. And, you know, statistics show that people are more fond of crazy old men than they are of crazy old women. So Trump can play the madman strategy and act like a crazy old man and still have his supporters fawn over him while Elizabeth Warren, she snaps him because the, and becomes a crazy old lady. Her support is going to dwindle. And what's going to happen in Nevada and New Mexico with all the Native American voters over there? Is it possible that New Mexico and Nevada actually might be a swing states, you know, come 2020 because of Elizabeth Warren and her lying about her ethnicity? and of course getting away with it because i'm pretty sure the native american community is not going to be very fond of her and then of course if they jump ship or not vote for her at all of course the democrats are going to you know bounce on them oh how dare you you know you're leaving the plantation you should never vote for republican you know just like they do with everybody else and then of course even more bad news for the democrats is that trump is gaining among independents and this is exactly what i talked about was going to happen you see the democrats have aligned themselves with socialists, far leftists, and batshit crazy people. People who are not coherent to the independent voters. The independent voters that look at Trump's policies, they look at what Trump has been doing, and they're saying, you know what? We're not in a depression. We're not in a major war. The economy is going along fine, and they don't see a real problem with what Trump is doing. I guarantee you the vast majority of independent voters don't give a crap about Trump wanting to build the wall, Trump wanting to deport illegal immigrants. How I would even suggest the majority of them actually agree with him on that. So you have this huge surge going in Trump's favor among the independent voters that are looking at the Democratic field and they're looking and saying these people are nuts. These people are endorsing socialism, endorsing far leftism, insane ideology, you know, insane ideologies. And we're not talking about GOP or Democrat voters. We're, we're talking about the people in the middle, the people who are you, the people who usually break and make elections. Because we already know who's going to vote for Trump. You know, it's the MAGA hat wearing people that they're, they're going to go out and vote for Trump no matter what. You have the Democratic Socialists, the far left that, you know, some business Democrats are still holding on hope, but most of them have flinked independent voters or have jumped on the Trump train. So we know who's going to vote for who. We have that category already established, but it's the independent voters who make and break elections. And as the poll suggests, independent voters are going to Trump more and more because of the craziness and incoherency of the Democratic Party. Because the Democrats are not unified. They're under a schismatic movement. They are torn between the neoliberals and socialists. You have dodos like Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, who is basically the front Democrat, the top Democrat, besides Nancy Pelosi, who compared to AOC looks extraordinarily weak. And then, in, and then in the Democratic field, you have Bernie Sanders, Elizabeth Warren, and Joe Biden. Joe Biden is losing his marbles. Bernie Sanders, a socialist, is having health problems. And Elizabeth Warren, the liar, neoliberal, pretending to be a far leftist, cannot handle pressure. So the Democrats are, uh, I, I can't even explain how bad things look for the Democratic Party at this point. And it's just going to get worse. This is an, um, th th this 2020 election is going to be far better than 2016. I cannot wait. 
but either way you guys you know all all, the, all of the articles will be in the link in the description box below if you guys want to check them out and you guys go ahead and let me know what you thought about this video in the in the comment section below and that's about it for this one peace out guys